Halifax in Yorkshire has not hitherto won fame for being a centre of the glamour trade. It's more famous for its mills and building societies than for its perfume fashion salons. But now budding Halifax models and glamour girls have a chance to take the first difficult steps to the top. The age of Les and Louise has arrived in Halifax. These girls are heading for a big grey house on a hill. This is the headquarters of the Les and Louise Morton Charm School. They will pay about £17 for a course on etiquette, modelling, table manners, deportment and makeup. This is Valerie, isn't it? Mm, yes, Doreen. Yes, very good height, good legs, needs to loosen up quite a bit. Thank you. Yes, lovely hair, manageable, be very good for modelling. Thank you. Susan, the modelling. Uh, just one more course. Thank you. Uh, this is Jane, completely different type. Next, they are cased by Les, assisted by a beauty expert, a local hairdresser and a retired model. Les, an ex-army corporal, an ex-haulage manager and an ex-proprietor of a Halifax gown shop, likes to view the raw material before Louise gets to work charming it. Thank you. This is Linda. Yes. Green. Again, she's got good height, but um, the walk certainly needs quite a lot of attention and the movement. Thank you. I think yeah. maybe she ought to grow her hair first to uh, make something of it. The idea to start the charm school struck Les and Louise rather suddenly. Their destiny was revealed in a moment of inspiration during a car ride on the A1 north of Doncaster. Down in London on a business trip, we got in, uh, invited out to Henry Gatter for the, for the whole weekend. Coming home on the Sunday, late Sunday afternoon in the old A1, um, on approaching Doncaster, as uh, Kai's coming greyer, Going through the main high street in Doncaster, the women's clothes getting darker and darker, getting depressed, kind of coming back to Yorkshire after having such a wonderful weekend down there. On arriving in Wakefield, the skies definitely blackened over. And I suddenly realised, I thought, oh, I could bring life and colour into somebody's life. And uh, I suddenly wanted uh, to do uh, fashion shows and produce some colour. Louise came up the idea what did I think regarding uh, converting our back room seven into yards by seven into a, a salon and now girls entering an hotel dining room and sitting pretty I don't want you to come into a dining room like this but I will demonstrate it for you Now I'm going to ask Bernadette to show you the correct way. Right, Bernadette? And now I'll have you... Most of the girls who enrol in the charm school are the daughters of newly prosperous businessmen whose mums wish to improve their daughter's station in life but perhaps lack the skill or even the inclination to do a conversion job themselves. That was very good, Deborah. And now we'll have the sitting pretty part. And this is just as important as the part I've just shown to you. Will you all uncross your knees, please? All right. And we'll begin from the left. So it's the left foot there and the ankle underneath. Good. And now un uncross your ankles. Sit straight. Put your shoulders back and your heads up. Good. And that's how I want you to sit. The girls learn to plaster their faces with paint. This is the makeup course, part of Louise's plan to mould this 17 year old towards a better life. Do you like it? Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. And you like the eyelashes? Yeah. I Very feel good. comfortable as well. Oh, good. Um, you know, I used to have like big red rosy lips. <laughs> and... Did you? <laughs> and big bright orange cheeks, you know. Yeah. Big black eyebrows. <laughs> You've got big black eyebrows now. <laughs> what kind of wives do you think that your charm school girls are going to make for Yorkshire men? Very good, because uh, we teach them that the man they marry is the main person in their life to begin with. 
Roll on women's lip. Very good, yes. But uh, this we do. We do say, when they come here, we don't teach them to make up for other men. We teach them to make up for the man in their life. Do you stand more chance of having a millionaire husband by going to a charm school? Yes, I think so. You get into the right circles of people to meet one. What about the sort of husband that you'd, uh, that you'd have? What sort of man would he be? <laughs> Tall, dark and handsome and plenty of money. <laughs> really? What about you? A millionaire. <clears throat> I'm sorry? A millionaire. You wouldn't, really? I would. Why? Well, he's got lots of money. Is that what you're interested in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about you? I want a millionaire as well. You want a millionaire too? Yes, I think mm. it's very important to have money. Is it? You can't do a lot without it. You can't? And, and what about you? Anybody. <laughs> Aren't you pandering to snobbery a bit? What, by bringing life into somebody's life? No. No, I'm not at all. Uh, we bring enjoyment. So you've got a lovely Yorkshire accent. Oh, I love no. you for that. <laughs> the moment you say Yorkshire accent, people, uh, for some unknown reason, they mustn't have travelled in the South because they immediately think we wear shawls and clothes. And we think the Southerners don't wash. So. <laughs> don't, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well scrubbed, yet untutored Yorkshire lasses, however, are inclined in Halifax, at least, to have certain problems all of their own. Well, for a start, if I walk, walk into people, I want to learn to walk straight. <laughs> What's all this walking straight? <laughs> well, um, when I'm walking down the street, I walk into people, the person who I'm walking with, and I knock her over every time. You don't, do you? <laughs> it really annoys with me. You've been on the cherry brandy and you're still at school. <laughs> it's true. What's she like when she arrives, an average girl? Uh, usually stoops a little bit. And uh, this is possibly due to the hills we have here in the north. You mean they all got bent backs? No, I don't mean that. I say that we, we have a tendency in the north to stoop a little because of the hills. We get a tremendous amount of young ladies coming to this school who are telling us, of course, that they're lacking confidence. Their husband is getting on in promotion and going places they've never been to before. In his job. You mean? In, in yes. his job. In his job. And, of course, in this day and age, the woman, of course, is... Doing the entertaining, isn't Doing she? the entertaining, and she's also uh, a big part of her husband's career. If you gave a small dinner party, you wouldn't want chip butties throwing at your guests, would you? You would want it lovely. Well, if the art of chip butty throwing is not on the charm school curriculum, table manners certainly are. This is the younger class. Beneath the heavy makeup lie the schoolgirl complexions of 12 to 13 year old girls learning the mysteries of dining out in style. Now, if you were given a choice of consomme or thick soup, what would you think consomme was? It's a thin soup. It's clear soup. Good. Yes. Now, if I then offered to you a piece of toast or a dinner bun, uh, which would you have with the thick soup? The dinner buns? The dinner bun. The dinner bun. Right, so we take a dinner bun. Why do you think they prepare salt in small dishes like this, instead of giving it to us with the little holes? You're only supposed to put it onto the edge of the plate. Yes. You must always put salt at the side of the plate. What uh, qualities do you think that you and Les have got um, which can inspire other girls to uh, have confidence and to learn etiquette and uh, refinement and charm and all the rest of it? Well, in the beginning, I didn't think Leslie had that. Uh, I thought I was the one being the female. And then uh, we found that uh, Leslie had these um, latent potentialities. One latent potentiality Les discovered in himself was an ability to act as a DJ when the charm school graduates try out their paces at a fashion show. For the girls excitedly preparing backstage for their moment of truth, a slight hint of the glamorous high fashion world has come up north to them, even if a hotel in Huddersfield may lack the luster of a Paris salon. Though isn't it a little sad that the girls, their mums and Louise and Les perhaps may be pandering to a dream, to an illusion that if you change yourself, transform your natural charm, that the doors of a new glittering world of success and glamour will automatically open.